Okay, I think we can start. So, my name is Olga, and as you can obviously read, I'm talking about Energy Star. And uh, my talk is divided into four main sections. The first one is about Energy Star itself, a little bit of background information, then about the computer specification of Energy Star with a focus on laptop computers. And then I will talk about the both parties of, uh, about the advantages, disadvantages, and things like that. And then I will come to a section where I will tell you how you can test your laptop for energy star compliance if you ever um, want to. And finally, I have a short part about the status of energy star in OpenSUSE. So, Starting with the background information, um, Wikipedia says Energy Star is a United Government program to promote energy efficient consumer products. And this is basically, basically um, all you have to know that, that summarizes it very well. Um, a little bit of more information, it was founded in 1991 by the EPA, EPA and then later on they partnered with the US government and you might wonder if Energy Star the US only label or something like that. It is not, um, because of a US um, government degree, the use and procurement is um, granted for public authorities. So as a consequence of that, um, that's for example the European Commission caring about the Energy Star label in Europe. And they have only a subset of the specs um, of the EPA and have also own specs but only care about office equipment um, but in the end of 2006 they adopted the computer specification those so those specifications are equal. So you might wonder what products can actually be Energy Star um, labeled and um, there's a lot more than just computer product there there are um, also roofs, windows, things like that or even dishwashers, clothing washers, boilers and a lot more and of course there's the office equipment um, like printers, <coughs> monitors, even exit signs and of course notebooks or computers and that, this will be the focus of the presentation so um, coming to the computer specification um, the table of contents look like that it's about 20 pages long and it contains a lot more detail than I will talk about here. So if I'm sure or want to know more, um, consult the original specification. So um, I have to make clear some terms at first. There are two types of laptop categories. Um, um, category B um, are all uh, notebooks that have uh, Video card with at least 128 RAMs, uh, megabyte of RAM, and this memory has to be non-shared. And all other laptops are and um, summarized in category A. So there are, of course, there are some requirements a laptop has to fulfill in order to 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 meet the spec. Um, it needs at first it needs two important. Um, capabilities, it, not, it needs a working sleep mode and in this case it means suspend RAM and it needs um, support for wake up alarm. There are also some software requirements. Um, in the default configuration of a laptop, um, the display needs to power down after 15 minutes automatically and the whole system needs to power down automatically after 30 minutes. So, um, for testing a laptop, um, the specification defines three operational modes um, a laptop has to be tested against. Um, I thought that the off mode is quite simple, it's just the system is um, completely bound, powered down and the working state is lost. Um, then another mode is the sleep mode that's um, actually suspend RAM, so the working state is traced to, to memory and this is just a low power mode you would usually recover from in um, a few seconds. Um, these both modes can be extended by another feature by Wacom LAN 
and it depends um, on the distribution channel of the laptop. If um, you have to test the laptop with, with Wake on LAN enabled or not. Um, maybe the most important mode is the idle mode. So if the system is just fully up and running, and you usually reach um, this mode with um, powering up the system and waiting about 15 minutes or a certain time frame until all onshore tasks are finished and the system is idle. So of course there are some consumption limits for the different modes. On the left side you see the, the modes. Um, the idle mode is split up into, two, into, into the two categories. And on the bottom you have a scale with, um, of watts um, from about 0 to 25 or something. Um, for off mode, um, a system must not um, consume more than um, 1 watts and with wake alarm enabled it must not um, exceed the limit of 1.7 watts. It's just adding up 0 0.7 watts to, to these both modes so you reach um, the value it, it must not um, consume more than, than this way can learn enabled. So um, I think that's pretty clear. Um, idle mode um, category A laptops must not exceed the limit of 14 watts and um, idle mode category B laptops um, must not exceed the limit of 22 watts. So um, the specification also defines the requirement um, and how the test setup might look like or has to, uh, has to look like. So the system has to be um, configured um, as should. So you um, must not, you are not allowed to do any modifications to the configuration. Um, for network connectivity, um, the live network has to stay in place all the time, and the wireless wireless network has to be turned off. Um, you might wonder why this is the case, because it's a common use case for mobile devices, laptops, to have um, wireless network enabled, um, but I'm com coming to do this problem at a later point. Um, then furthermore, there must not be connected any external devices to the system. Um, the battery has to be removed, otherwise um, this would um, falsify the measurements. And um, the energy star specification also says if um, you cannot remove the battery due to hardware limitations, you have um, to fully load the battery before doing the tests. And of course you need a power meter, um, which has to be connected between the main outlet and the AC power supply. And um, this is how uh, the test procedure might look like. It's stripped down, it contains um, some more details, but I picked the most important ones. And the first and um, fourth steps are um, equal for each test of the different modes. Um, so at first you record the laptop system information, you make sure that it's configured as shipped, you um, configure to display, um, to power down the display after one minute, and um, as a consequence of this, um, the item mode tests will be done with um, the display switched off. off. Um, finally, you shut down the laptop and um, now you start one specific test. As an example, I, I took um, the idle mode test here. Um, so you switch on your laptop, you log in, then you make sure that the default desktop is in place, you close uh, um, uh, all windows, things like that. Um, then you wait um, a specific time until the system is idle. Um, then you start your measurements for five uh, minutes with one reading per second and then you um, evaluate your, your measurements so you have an average power consumption and if this um, sequence um, was done under laboratory conditions um, then you can send the data to NFT Star and they will most likely um, include your product into the database. So. Um, that's just another picture, just to illustrate um, how the workflow of the um, test is. Um, you first prepare the UUT, the, the, the specification refers to the unit under test as UUT all the time. Um, then you boot, you write down the system information, then you wait until the idle state is reached. You shut the system down and then you start 
one specific test, you wait until it's finished, and then you restart all over again from um, the idle state. So that's an example how um, such results uh, might look like. In the top you'll see general system information, um, then on the, in the middle there are the system capabilities if it's capable of weight of make online, for example, and at the bottom um, there are the actual test results. So coming to the next section, um, what does you actually get or what you might get um, when labeling something with energy star? Of course, the users um, want to um, run their battery as long as possible, so this increases the mobility and they might even save money, not to a huge extent, but um, <coughs> maybe a little bit. And maybe they even have a good conscience when doing something good for the environment when buying Energy Star products. Um, both manufacturers and distributions, um, I think the, um, the biggest advantage would be marketing because um, power management is everywhere these days. So um, I think that's the most important point for them. And of course, usual companies um, can reduce their power costs because they have to maintain a lot of systems. So at a first glance, um, the, something like Energy Star um, is good for everyone. So what have the different parties actually to do um, to get an Energy Star certification? Um, the manufacturers, of course, they have to use um, energy-friendly um, hardware. Um, they have to ship a good um, default BIOS configuration and of course they need a good interface documentation um, for their um, hardware features, power man management so that um, kernel developers um, can make use of, of these um, hardware capabilities. Um, there's a bunch of technology technologies in the kernel, um, just picking some example like power management for USB or VLAN um, or um, something like TICLIS and DINTIX or frequency scaling. Then there are desktop applications or the desktop developers. Um, they have to lead attention to um, making the applications configurable so that um, later on distributions or vendors can um, ship an Energy Star compliant default configuration and um, they, of course, they don't, um, shouldn't do um, something bad like polling every time and they should make use of um, new technologies like new default things like that to, to reach events and not to, to poll every time. So, yes, and uh, you of course need a good default policy, something like um, not running and broke jobs when on battery and things like that. So um, coming to the distribution, they actually have the easiest part of the whole stack, but um, they can also break the whole stack. They just have to ship an AG Star compliant default configuration. Um, and you can see from the um, bottom to the top, um, all parties are involved. Um, and the distribution, if they do not do their job right, um, they can break the whole stack and um, can destroy the work of developers, manufacturers, whatever. So that's uh, actually a very important point. Um, Energy Star is not um, a hardware only label, it's a combination between um, software and hardware. So, um, both parts have to play together um, in the end to reach an, to get an Energy Star certification. So, um, I personally think there are some problems um, involved in the specification. For example, there are some annoying requirements. Um, for example, the time frame for automatically, automatically going to sleep is, I think it's quite short. I fully understand that it makes sense to power down the system when it's uh, not in use, but 30 minutes are uh, quite short, I think. Um, also, um, I think there are some missing test scenarios. Like I mentioned before, um, there's no, there are no wireless connectivity tests, which is a common use case for mobile devices 
or no usual application tests. Like uh, mail, browsing, something like that. And also, um, there are um, all the tests are done without external devices, and I think it's also a common use case um, that you put in USB sticks and mice to a laptop. So, and as mentioned before, um, this combination of software and hardware makes it quite hard because all different parties um, need to cooperate and. Well, that's not always easy, so there are currently only a few laptops um, with um, Energy Star label and even less with um, Linux, running Linux. Um, a prominent example, which is Energy Star certified, is for example one laptop per child. You can find it in the product database. So, is it accepted? Um, not yet, I think. Um, in parts um, in, in regard to um, laptops or computers, uh, I personally have seen very less Energy Star certified laptops. Um, but um, the vendors and manufacturers, manufacturers and, and start to work on that and it brings more and more recognition. So, um, now I'm coming to the part where I'm showing how you personally um, can give it a test and, and check if your laptop um, could be Energy Star compliant. There are two scenarios. Um, the first one, a good one, and it's also the one which um, needs the spec. Um, for this setup, you need two computers. One is the unit under test, so the laptop you want to test. Um, and a second, you need a system recording the measurement values um, because otherwise, um, if you would do the tests um, on the system itself, um, this would falsify the results of the um, of the measure measurements. Of course, you need ampermeter. The ampermeter has also to fulfill certain requirements, but I left this out here. Um, then, you, on the recording system, you need a measurement software. Um, I picked um, QG PMM, it was the only um, thing I found which um, meets all the requirements. And finally, you need a script um, to evaluate the data from QG PMM. Uh, you might wonder um, where the script and um, where do you get the script from. I'm coming to that later on. So, that is just a picture to illustrate this. You have the one laptop you want to measure on the left side. Um, on the right side you have uh, the recording system with um, software running and in between you have the ampere meter um, yeah. and after um, doing one test you export, exp can, um, export the data from QTDMM and you execute the script and so you get, get the average power consumption so that's also the bad scenario and that's really just for fun if you um, want to give it a very um, quick glance. So, um, in this case, um, you just read the battery drain from a file system, PROC, FS or SUSFS. So, for this setup, you have to keep the battery in place and connect it from, uh, disconnect it from power source. And then you need a script for monitoring, monitoring the battery drain, or you can also use to, um, tools like PowerTop, um, but they already give you um, maybe they give you too much overhead already. So it's too, yeah. Um, of course, you can only do idle mode testing, and at the bottom you see an example um, how I how you can do it. I just measured for five um, seconds here. So, where to find all this information, um, there's a wiki page on um, opensuse.org um, and it um, contains um, a detailed guide um, how you can uh, measure your laptop. Um, it also has a, a, sheet, a result sheet template where you can fill out all your values and you can also find um, the scripts uh, which are used there and this is a central point um, where I will put more and more information in the future. And of course, you, that's the homepage of um, the measurement software. 
So, um, coming to the last point, is OpenSUSE ready? No, it's not yet, because um, I still hesitate to, to um, push um, the configuration option to automatically um, power down system after 30 minutes, and uh, my efforts are quite new, new so um, I think I will um, try to push this um, in the near future, but I think um, some people might um, have something against the setting. Yeah. So I, I, I definitely see that it's problematic. So um, as long as there's no um, um, applications with Energy Star compliant default configuration shipped with OpenSUSE, you can um, go to the build service and I put um, Energy Star compliant, KPower safe and Power Manager configuration package there. Okay, I think that's it. that is it. Um, um, are there any questions? Yeah, please. Um, do you run the test uh, against the uh, laptops automatically or is it all done manually? Th that was done man manually. And do you plan in the future to implement, say, a form or something that makes it run automatically, just bring in your laptop? Yeah, this, this could be possible because you can um, do a remote makeup and things like that. Um, this could be possible to to be done automatically. But you have to, the setup with the ampere meter, you have to... Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. And I have a third question. You talked about a database where I can find which, yeah. where, which laptops were compiled. Yeah. Where's the URL? Um, it's missing from the presentation. It's um, energystar.gov. And so you can have a look. And there it's quite good. Put it on the and the wiki page has it not yet, but I can put it there. And, so, and everybody can, can, can send results to energystar.org or .gov and they'll take that into account? Um, what, I think you, I'm, I'm not sure if you need to be a partner of energystar. Um, so that they will recognize your entry. Um. So if, for example, Kinsuli would like to have a list of all registered uh, computers that are known to be an Star compliant, where you can get the label for them if they ship with OpenSUSE, you'd probably first need to have the community send back the, send back the results to you, and then yeah, you would well, send it to... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if this can be done by the community, but it can. It can but um, it really has uh, to meet a lot more requirements to test than here, so, so the whole setup is um, quite complicated. So, so everybody would get that from large manufacturer or willing to... Yeah, to yeah or from software, the software vendors from the... Um, it's currently worth noting there are only 217 laptops shipping within the European Union that are Energy Star compliant. Okay. Not low numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were the changes you made to KPowerSafe just configuration yeah, changes? It's just, the just configuration defaults. Okay, so we should just get, put that upstream. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. No, I don't want the systems to go to sleep after 30 minutes. I think that's a stupid requirement. So that's when you get it. When, that's after the first install. There's nothing preventing you from doing it. And yeah. if you see on the market side that they can ship with a level saying when you start. It might be in the development yeah, I think if a hardware vendor, they don't have a hardware vendor. Uh, what's, the, what's the definition of idle? Is playing a movie no, so that idle or idle does mean um, powering up, closing all applications, um, something like browser clo closing it and um, just doing nothing. Okay. Yeah, no applications are running. Oh, it's just uh, maybe you have default applications in the panel and then it's um, like um, like shift. Okay. But why not power down then in like five minutes? Because there is nothing being done on that machine. If I, yeah, it does nothing. There is yeah. nobody on the keyboard and it does nothing. There is no program running. Hence, it can power down. It can go into sleep mode yeah. in like five minutes because it can wake up from sleep. You quite fast. It, 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 so yes. why not five minutes? Yeah. Because it's not doing anything. Yeah, maybe you're running on an IRC um, client somewhere, so and your network goes down. You always sure. um, but then it's the definition of idle. Yeah. yeah. If, 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 if there is a network connection, then it's not idle. Yeah. It's doing something. Yeah. Okay. Put the system into. <laughs> For auto sleep after 30 minutes, yeah. what criteria is being used in Susie? 
Um, what basis do you use to say that the system is idle enough to put it into sleep mode? Um, how, do you, how do you decide the system is idle? That's um, basically in, in this way it's it's done when the X server thinks it's idle. I'm I'm not quite sure how K Power Cell go through to, uh, um, and Gnome Power Man should have the idle detection, but I think it's X um, not getting any keyboard or mouse wins. So it doesn't take into account background processes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So playing a video is idle because there is no keyboard input. No, but um, if no default configuration, um, the system does not um, power up and plays a video automatically. Usually, if it does, <laughs> so there's probably infrastructure work that needs to be done to refine the idle detection. Maybe have the, some programs in Debian and just say no, I'm running now, so the system is not idle. Even so, if no. Video player would be so I think time is up. Um, if you have any other questions, um, I'll be outside. That's a super Thank you.